Rana, who is a celebrity, who is an actor as well as an entrepreneur, who's been seeing potential of working with startups and working with consumer brands. He's always had this keen eye to be able to launch and see what is the potential of a brand and where it can really, from a, as a startup, where it is and where it can go to. So I think with your help, we've seen so many Indian brands in the consumer space, which they have grown and how they have sort of multiplied themselves over the years. Um, so thank you for giving this service to the startup industry. And where did you find your calling and how did you start making investments? So startup, I'm from the movies and everything that we do is a startup. Uh, every time we tell a story, we have a group of lovely creative people come together we tell a story, it works, doesn't work. We have to go back to doing something altogether very differently. Uh, so the idea of startups and storytelling somewhere is very similar. So it started with visual effects, which led me into tech, which then led me into building advertising for that tech, and then so on and so forth. So I think it, was, it wasn't strategic, but it was, it was organic the way I kept moving into one and the other. You know, today we are also going to talk about uh, his newest venture, which is actually Loka Loka. So both uh, he and Harsha, they are both co-founders in it. If you are in the Alcoboy world, we, you already know that uh, Dwayne okay. Johnson, he introduced it Aquila in midst of COVID, 2020 October. And his company is valued at 3.5 billion right now. It's called Terramena. Yeah. So that was always in my mind because we all follow Dwayne Johnson. He is the rock. You know. In our generation, he's like the yeah. Bahubali of America. <laughs> so, oh. and when I started discussing the idea with him, he was like, let's, damn, let's do, do that thing off. And he was the one like who also suggested that uh, let us have music in the, into the uh, brand. And uh, Anirudh was the first and last choice for us. So it took us like one meeting together to convince him. He was on board immediately and we started delegating with the brand and uh, started understanding the palettes and we did a lot of fun stuff which I think he will he will be the right person to talk so <laughs> so I think it doesn't matter anymore where you're from as much as you as long as you understand culture you understand brand and why loka loka uh, first I don't know I, I have a I was like why not loka loka and why we chose tequila is actually I had a little experience when I was part of a fund where we invested in Alcobet uh, we invested in some uh, gin and tonic based companies uh, and we realized India has a strange sense of competition where when there's someone who's just made it, we'll have eight things that look exactly the same if the process of making it is not hard. Uh, if you just take the idea of tequila, it's geotagged to Mexico, you have to be in those highlands to make it. Uh, it's volcanic water and agave together which make the tequila the tequila they are. And I f felt like fighting in a market that is already mature, I said let's fight with the heavyweights and we'll know what, what really to do. And by the time we get into India, we really want to be a global brand that's coming into India rather than the other way around. The idea of Mexico and India, they're two ancient cultures. Both are very celebratory in their nature. And yet there's nothing that actually fuses both of us. Uh, for the matter of fact, there's, there's not great Mexican food in India either, right? So I just feel like it's just the fact that the cultures are far. Uh, and we thought America was the best place for us to marry both these cultures. It's right next door to Mexico as well. So hence, hence the, it was, it was literally an organic start. It was not planned to be that manner, but really the whole thing is set in that process pretty well. What other sectors are you gung-ho about? See, one is, uh, I'm actually not by sector, I'm by product in some manner. I think that's, uh, that's more how I can understand things. Uh, we've been invested in skincare, we've been invested in fashion for a while. But the, the, but the largest step into retail is Broadway. It's really like a one place for all D2C brands. Like take the year of 2020 to now, I think uh, I can say successfully India has over 
200 or 250 brands that are 1000 over the 200 crore category like who are doing 150 to 200 crores all built in the last 6 7 years and most of them don't have a retail strategy in some manner broadway is the new age departmental store which caters to almost 160 to 180 brands in one store along with food stories uh, that's as part of what future do you see any kind of licensing content which emerges out of cinema whether it's a movie or whether it's a character classically we've always been a one film one ip does well at that period of time uh, it's probably sold all together at once and nobody really bothered about licensing uh, in the globally it's been a very very big thing like today a lot of old studios survive because of the content they own but in india most of the studios are dead because they don't own their content no more they've been perpetually sold either to a television network or to an independent buyer so i think now that that stage is kind of matured the ecosystem is very connected you have tech connecting them very fast you have finance you have it's very integrated very yeah. very integrated you have several companies that are already listed and been listed for many many years now you could connect india as one country that it doesn't matter if you make a film in telugu there's or an audience in delhi who will watch it doesn't matter if you make a film in haryana there is a group in tamil nadu that will watch it so i think now is when we are kind of creating that one india one cinema one entertainment base